you're listening to Conversations with Friends. Indulge in our nerdy conversations about all things women, money, and business. My name is Ashley. And I'm Denise. And, and this is I'm Hannah. The- <laughs> <laughs> Just keep confusing Hannah there. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Railroad you. <laughs> Hi, thanks for having me. <laughs> you're so no welcome. Worries. So um, Hannah is our first guest in um, our second series um, of um, our podcast. And I would I want to get Hannah to introduce herself because I think it's better that the person um, who we're introducing will explain themselves better. So, Hannah, you go ahead and explain who you are and what you do and why we've got you on the podcast today. (laughs) Great. Thanks. Well, you've got me on the podcast because I'm lovely. No No questions Um, there. <laughs> no, um, so I'm Hannah McCormick. I am the founder of HM Virtual Assistance, host of the Showing It Solo podcast, and I am a marketing coach and consultant specializing in helping solopreneurs um, master and build their online marketing and online presence. And I like to focus particularly on those of us who didn't grow up with social media. You know, those of us who still remember what, <laughs> when the Nokia 3310 was all the rage or had legit millennium bug fears, you know, or maybe <laughs> owned a video better before it was re-cool again. <laughs> so, so all three of us then. I'm really looking forward to this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and you're going to find my accent is going to shift about all over the place because um, <laughs> even though I'm Canadian and I live in Canada, I did live in the UK for 17 years. Actually, Denise, that's how we met, right? Because yeah cousin went to ha- went to school with me like she was my mini me her name's also oh, I Hannah. love them yeah and... so my, my cousin Hannah yeah you you both went to school together didn't you coincidentally she's called Hannah as well but <laughs> I adopted her when I found out her name was Hannah I adopted her as my mini <laughs> um... <laughs> I love that so um... that's wonderful that you've got that those dual references from from Canada and from from the UK that's amazing yeah oh, so absolutely. how did you get I think we're going to ask the same question. <laughs> <laughs> well, how did you get started? What what got you started? I got fired. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, yeah, no, I <laughs> tell us like, that story. I like, it's I like like to say, when was fired. <laughs> yeah, I like, I like to say I like to say I got laid off or let go. What what happened was in um, 2019, I started a new job as an executive assistant to the CEO of a group of cranberry farms, which is sounds super random. Um, but he was a super duper busy guy. Um, he would have multiple, like he would have business trips that would have multiple destinations and multiple countries using multiple modes of transport, sometimes private jets, um, it, like all in one week, <laughs> you know? Gosh. And so one of my major duties was being responsible for his super complex itineraries as you can imagine come March 2020 that work kind of dried up (laughs) yes June 2020 um they uh they basically said like we don't really have a role for you anymore so we're we're you know we're gonna end your your employment here yeah yeah Uh, and (laughs) this was coincidentally the first day back after I had taken two weeks of stress leave because oh. the pandemic that had triggered a lot of um, other things for me, um, yeah. which I'm not going to go into right now, but I, I was having an, like a, a very emotionally stressful time. And I took just two weeks of stress leave at the recommendation yeah. of my doctor. First day yeah. back. That I was go, the news. <laughs> Great. <laughs> yeah. And so um, here I am now. It's 2020. Um, everyone's shut down. Like I'm terrified of going out in public anyway. I think everyone yeah. was at that time. Yeah, yeah. My husband, who was supposed to be going to school to start learning to be a plumber, that's right. all been put off because of the pandemic. And I've got the kids at home; they're too young for school at this point. And now we have no income because uh, he wasn't earning because he was about to be going to school. And now I don't. And now I'm unemployed. And so I. Um, I had to find something quickly and I didn't want to go working in another office. I didn't want to go building relationship, learning a new job and everything. 
um just in case like they always let admin people go like first yeah, yeah, it's yeah. always the yeah. first to go when you're an admin so someone told me uh like my sister's boss's cousin <laughs> had a was a VA coach and had a course that was happened to be just starting like that week um on how to become a VA she let me yeah. sign up a little late um I hopped in on the course and I had my first client before the course was even finished and brilliant yeah I basically I gave myself I had enough severance to cover two months and I said okay I need to be earning enough money by the time that runs out that I can support us and so that's what I did and to do that I have to figure out online marketing like you have to how do you build a client base online from thing you have to figure out how to use online marketing and so as I dove in and I learned it the better my marketing got the more people started mm-hmm. reaching out to me, not for my virtual system services, but for my marketing services. I like what you're doing with your Instagram, Hannah. Can you do it for me too? And and so my role went from virtual assistant to social media manager. I took a course in copywriting and some courses in other social media platforms. And so then I started doing more done for you, marketing yeah, in yeah. general, email marketing, copywriting for websites. And the more I did it, the more I realized the people I really like to work with are those solo printers, people like me who needed to get a good start. Um, but they can't always afford to hire someone of my level um, to do all the work for them. And so that's yes. how the, it kind of evolved into coaching. I created some self-paced courses and I have some coaching programs where I can basically yeah. teach people who were me in June, 2020, how to launch a business online and, and support themselves. That's amazing. Mm-hmm. Hannah, that's such an incredible story. I think so many times we can get crippled by that kind of experience because it's it's devastating, you know, and, and a lot of people experienced that at the beginning of the pandemic where they lost their livelihoods, they lost their sense of self, they lost their sense of identity. And in such a short space of time, you've turned it around into something amazing and, and completely your own. That's not only aiding and abetting your family's sort of survival (laughs) but it's giving you something that you're enjoying and I love that you speak about the fact that you just right okay this is what we're doing I'm gonna learn how to do it Uh, I I just love that attitude yeah that's that's me all over like for example I have become I'm joking about it because before I go on my trip tomorrow I have to cut my husband's hair and my dad booked me in for a hair appointment on the weekend because apparently yeah. I'm that family hairdresser because again <laughs> we didn't want to go out for a haircut so right so yeah. I figured out how to do it and so I I've been it. cutting my family's hair including my own hair for the last what four years now yeah um, amazing and I've said that, talk- that saves you money definitely saves you money <laughs> yeah, saves, <laughs> saves I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't dare attempt to cut my own hair. It, that would be an absolute. I haven't disaster. done anything complicated with mine. Like I literally, <laughs> you in a ponytail, you just kind of pull it forward and snip, 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 and then oh, maybe, I think that was TikTok. Yeah. yeah, and then maybe it's a couple of little do you do's. Um, nothing complicated on me, but I have given my mum a pixie cut. So oh, amazing! <laughs> oh, wow. I feel like that's a that's a huge talent. Well done. <laughs> yeah. You could just be hairdresser, yeah, hairdresser on the side, you know. Yeah. Yeah. But that's so so I, was you talented. <laughs> I was I was gonna say what is your like turning point of inspiration for your business, but you've just explained it all because um yeah. you know it's really interesting when we talk about that time during that sort of what I like to call the dark ages of COVID. Um yeah. but you know, I hear so many stories of, of different people's outcomes and it is surprising how many people have completely turned their lives around from that mm. that particular time. Um, and it's really interesting because as much as we hated that particular time in our lives, there was something about it almost like, I want to say like I, Mother Nature or some destiny or whatever you want to call it, want, made us all stop and, and say, mm-hmm. right, and we're all pushing ourselves too far, let's turn around. And the amount of people I hear all the time that have chosen to do go down a different path since covid is extraordinary Mm. so you know um it takes something like that to potentially change people's outlook on their life um Mm. you know and i do appreciate there's a lot of people that have really suffered during that time as well but you know there's a lot of a lot of people out there that really it's given them time to to see where their life was going and how they needed to change it um so it's really really fascinating and there's a really Oh, sorry. sorry, carry on, Hannah. I just I just want to say as well, like I was devastated when I got let go. Yeah. Like 
I didn't have much time to like sit around and feel sorry for myself, but I'm not like, I still get a little bit like triggered when I think about it. I've never been fired before ever. Yeah, this yeah. was the first time yeah. I'd ever That's been fired. A, and that takes a big knock to your ego, doesn't yeah. it? And your confidence. Mention, yeah. And it was a job I could do blindfolded. That was the yeah. one, really, it wasn't a, I didn't get fired because I couldn't do the job. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It, um, it's totally and, out of your control. Exactly. And it was just, and also in yeah. hindsight, it wasn't a good fit. I was convincing myself I enjoyed my job, but in hindsight, I didn't. It's almost like, you know, when you're in an abusive relationship and you think everything's yeah. great until you get some distance and then you're like, oh, yeah. God. Yeah. Whoa. Oh, yeah. And, <laughs> oh, I didn't know uh, that was there. <laughs> exactly. And so it, I'm not saying it's an easy. It was an easy thing. But no. in hindsight now, like I tell myself, it, like I say it was the best thing that ever happened to me. I wouldn't have made this jump. I wouldn't have made this leap if I didn't have to like absolutely yeah, yeah. Have to I was literally going to talk choice. about that there's um I can't remember it's I think it's called the pressure curve I can't think with the name of the two scientists that developed it but essentially there's a sweet spot between like extreme stress that is devastating and this and stress that is healthy there's a point there where it can where it where obviously on a chronic st- if you're chronically stressed it can create a lot of long-term problems but there's that have to point in there and when you have to do something, when you just have to solve the problem, um, it, it fires up a whole bunch of in, uh, like innovative um, ideas in us. It, it can be really, really motivating. And mm-hmm. I think that's really interesting on the background of what was a period where we all had to think, where we literally our entire, all our usual routines changed. And often what happens in our brain with that time is that we just have time to think and process what's around us, what we want, what we don't want. And so I think that combination created a lot of opportunity for people to do things that maybe they'd never thought about doing before. And like you said, challenge what you're you know, what 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 you were kind of convincing yourself that you were in a good place, et cetera, et cetera. And create that situation where you're like, oh, actually, this is it's fine. It doesn't serve me anymore. Yeah brilliant i love it <laughs> denise i know i railroaded you over a railroaded you a question again <laughs> <laughs> that's all right um yeah i was just going to sort of the, one of the questions i want to ask is really and it's more for because because our podcast is aimed at talking at people that are perhaps just starting out in business trying to grow their business and you know is in, in you're possibly going to foresee challenges but hannah what would you say like you think are the most common challenges that are faced by women starting out in business or perhaps in the early stages of business Mm. okay actually and there's a couple the one um is uh when you've been socialized as a woman you're not used to saying good things about yourself we Mm -hmm. undersell ourselves chronically we're always told to like you know when someone gives you a compliment you go oh no you know and you immediately start Mm to are like disprove that compliment we're really bad at giving ourselves compliments oh Um, Oh, yes (laughs) and you know that there's a study i'm i don't know the exact but there was a study that showed like men will apply for or people who have been socialized as men i should say will apply i love that expression i haven't heard that before i really love that expression it's it's, so so valuable expression a hundred percent a hundred percent yeah um beautiful but yeah those who've been socialized as men will tend to apply for the job that they want even if they only meet like 50 percent of the qualifications or whatever yeah whereas people who've been socialized as women will tend to apply for will only apply for a job if they're overqualified for it which is yeah 100 yeah. percent or more yeah. Yeah. yeah and men i think are anywhere between 50 and 70 percent of the sk- of the required skills yeah yeah and yeah so um i i often tell you you guys have seen disney the original disney animated mulan movie right uh-huh, uh-huh. you know the yeah. song be a man <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm always telling my clients like they laugh because that that's one of the things that I, I'm always like, be a man. <laughs> like, pretend you've been socialized as a man yeah. and start talking to yourself as if you're amazing because that's you beautiful. are amazing and you need yeah, to switch yeah. off this programming that you've had being socialized as a woman this idea that you're not good enough yeah exactly yeah. so it's you've got to learn to that's one thing you really have to do is learn to talk in a complimentary way about yourself to um, yes. I also use this acronym ass be assertive specific and keep it simple when you're writing like copy for your marketing and stuff and like yes, being uh-huh. so instead of 
if we work together, you might, it's going to be when we work together, when we work together. you're going to freaking love it because I'm amazing. And I like, keep it. It, like really um, positive and assertive and like just um, apply for the job you want, not the yes. one you're overqualified yes. for kind of mentality. So that's, I, 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 can't, I, I can't tell you how many times in my past that I have applied to jobs that I'm overqualified for, because I think like that's the only kind of job I'm going to get and I'm not going to be able to get the job that I am you know maybe just qualified for or you know um and it's really interesting that you say that because at one point I thought it was just me that, that thought like that so oh. to to hear that there are many other women that think that way as well really I haven't I haven't worked with a single uh solo entrepreneur who's a woman who hasn't I haven't had to cover that m- mindset challenge with I have yet yeah, to meet. Yeah. I've yet to work with yeah. someone who hasn't had that to overcome. It is such a It's common... a huge huge part of my work as well. There's so many women who are and that is the biggest once you've overcome that hurdle, the amount of stuff that's so much simpler because of our conditioning, because of the way we're raised is it's unbelievable. It's We've been told ridiculous. that our work is inval our, our work isn't valuable. That's the problem is that yes. you know that still today no matter how egalitarian your relationship might be generally um those who have been socialized as women have the lion's share of the household mental load like yes yeah. just even primary me, like, carer yeah yeah i'm going yeah. away tomorrow and um i have to make sure that um like i have to make sure that i've like laid out all the clothes for the next two weeks so my husband doesn't have to remember which pants currently fit which child and um yeah. and he's perfectly capable of parenting but you know i have to think of the like you know i have to remember um <laughs> to wash the dog before I go because if he doesn't <laughs> wash before I go he's not washing you know and, and um, or make a list for someone to follow exactly yeah. and I mean and and, and my I, I don't want to sell my husband short because he's been incredibly supportive with me helping me with my business um and I am going away at the, he's got like exams these two weeks so it's gonna be a hard oh, hard work for him um but but it is generally <laughs> you find that that those who who uh women tend to share the the majority of the mental load of the work and we don't Mm -hmm. and it's unpaid labor no one pays us to do the dishes no one pays us to do the laundry no one pays us to watch the kids and and we tend so we're so programmed to undervalue the work that we put in that Mm -hmm. it's really hard it's a really hard mindset like to um, shift to shift yeah Mm -hmm. so that's amazing and i i and yeah, I think that's su- it's such an important topic. Anything relating to women in business, where you're, where that self promotion is required, where that need to put yourself in front of a customer or a client and and say, well, this is what I do confidently, and buy from me because I'm amazing. And those yeah. conversations don't exist if you can't, if you don't feel that self trust, if you don't have that confidence in your abilities. And they're so undermined by our society in general. It's not, not, deli- it's not, it's not a blame thing. It's the way our society is 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 set. There's mm-hmm. no finger pointing or anything like that. But I love that you, I love that you brought that up. <laughs> I mean, and what I find interesting is like that we never, as women, if we're sitting in an interview for somebody, we never, and they ask us what skills we have, we never mention the skills that we do generally day to day as women or yeah. have, as parents. You know. Um, like cutting hair and decorating those are incredible people pay million people pay you know thousands of dollars to learn how to do those kinds of things and i never like i don't put that i can decorate like because i can decorate a freaking amazing cake i'm also a self-taught cake decorator (laughs) and i don't put that on my resume i don't put that i cut people's hair on my resume i don't put you know that i but what about the soft skills what about the things that you guys you guys both got kids what about negotiating with children i mean Oh yeah, there is no CEO on this planet who's got better, bigger challenges than negotiating with a two or three year old. Time <laughs> management of ADHD. Yeah, exactly. Precisely. Both my kids have ADHD. I have ADHD. Oh, wow. as well as my husband, oh, wow. And I manage a family of ADHD people. That is like, and that is time blindness, isn't it? Complete time oh, blindness. My yeah, time if, blindness. If me, I was going to say, if someone had seen me early on today. Um, because I knew obviously I had this call at seven o'clock and the way my brain was ticking over about all the things I need to do once uh, my daughter finishes at school just after three o'clock and I knew she had a Spanish lesson and then she had a swimming lesson straight afterwards so she literally goes on her Spanish lesson at half four finishes that at ten past five 
in that split second, she is whipped off the computer, coat on, straight out that door for swimming to get there for half past. What people also don't understand is the negotiations of getting through temporary traffic lights down the road for me <laughs> that sit there oh. for 10 million years, not changing. And it's like, Counting, going, we're, going? Okay, we're, the we're going around here, we're going around here. And I managed <laughs> to get her there. I managed to get her to swimming lessons with one minute to spare. Now, if I, I did, I've often considered whether I should put that kind of stuff on a CV or not. Like, my ability, <laughs> my daughter you, me all the time, you know, negotiating all the, the traffic and all Whether the you do it, like, whether you do or don't put it on an actual CV, you have to give yourself, you have to write that CV for yourself so that you can do yeah. that self recognition. So you can say, look how much I achieve in just a basic day. Look how many transferable skills whether you put it on a real CV or not, but for you to be able to recognize how valuable your work is, for you to acknowledge how important what you do is, especially mums with kids. It's a great homework for your listeners now. Right? Yeah. <laughs> listeners, Go that's write your homework, a CV. is to write a CV that is all-inclusive, all-encompassing, yeah. everything you Life do. Life-encompassing. Write that CV. <laughs> you know? yeah. my, my, our abilities, I think, to think like two or three hours ahead constantly you know like when you're watching something on computer it's always streaming so you can see the little bit that's streaming along so it doesn't like stutter or anything like that that is woman's day you're always thinking like three hours ahead so I'm sitting here typing up something but in, but in my head I'm three hours down the road look finding the strategic route to go round to avoid the temporary traffic lights <laughs> Exactly. So that's it. And I would like to argue that, you know, they would say women are better at multitasking. I don't think we are. I think we're just oh, expected to do it more. Absolutely. So, yeah. There is a lot actual, of practice. Absolutely. <laughs> there was actual research that evidences that our brains are not designed. None of our brains, men, women, whatever, whatever you identify as, your brain is not designed to multitask. So if you're trying to multitask, you are creating like a traffic jam in your in your head so you're gonna drop you're gonna drop ball you, you, that's just how it works yeah. so before we all go off on a tangent of soapboxes because I feel that the three of us are <laughs> fairly <laughs> militant on these topics it's a shame we were recording before we started because we went off on a soapbox yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. exactly that's gonna have to for do more life. of these conversations <laughs> So um, can I get this straight, honey? Do you work specifically with women or do you work uh, with men and women? Um, Are you marketing I mean, I to I women? I don't turn away a, a, a man if, if they want to work with me. Of course. But they're not yeah, who yeah. I seek out. And, and my experience has been, because I have worked with a few men, and honestly, I just think my coaching style, my working style works better For with women with women or people who yeah. who have been socialized as women. Um, yeah. I also um, like, I've, I found, I also tend to attract and work well with a lot of neurodivergent entrepreneurs because I also okay. have that. Um, yeah, yeah. Mothers tend to enjoy working with me too, because again, mothers. So there's, um, you know, I tend to attract a lot of people like me and then that's who yeah. I, I enjoy working with. Um, yeah. Yeah. You are your ideal client. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Me, in 2020 is my ideal client basically. okay yes yes, yes. and yes. do you do any tailoring do you so obviously you don't market specifically but you clearly attract that tribe your tribe do you ta do any tailoring for their specific challenges I know we talked about the mindset thing that's obviously really tailored for for women um but are there any other things that you do in your in your services that are sort of tailored specifically well, yeah, I mean, and I actually do tailor my marketing um, to attract, like, the more specific you can be about who you attract, the better. I actually always have this analogy I tell about, um, you know, that episode in Friends where Joey has to eat a whole turkey and he yes, steals he baby's old maternity pants and he calls them his turkey eating pants? Yeah. I always say, like, market to the Phoebes because the Joeys will find you. And yeah. Um, so like that's an, <laughs> another Hannahism for you. Um, Love it. So, but I, so I'm always marketing to I'm marketing to my ideal client, like basically Brilliant. to younger me. Um, and and the way I tailor my approach, like I for example, I have some self paced courses which are super neurodivergent friendly because they're made by someone like it's all, all broken up, super simple, yeah. lots of analogies. Um, I love a good analogy, a visual, you know, that you can relate yeah. to the concept to. So helpful. Yeah, and then. Um, 
So then it's broken down really simply and co comprehensively. Um, and I've got workbooks, like you could just pick up the workbook and not watch the videos and still take away a whole bunch. Um, so like the whole thing, it's super value packed there. But then I also have the coaching because I find the truth of the matter is most of the people who seek out my support, it's not that they can't, it's that they don't have the confidence to do it. Maybe they need a little bit of technical industry know-how, but really they, they have the, the skills to do it. Um, I noticed particularly when I was first starting to do copywriting, uh, I would have these 90 minute calls at the beginning and ask all these pointed questions so that I could get what I needed for writing like their website copy, their sales page or whatever. And then when I was writing it, most of the words were pulled directly from the transcript. Like they had the words in them. They just needed to yeah, ask yeah. the right questions. Yeah. And so when I do the coaching, it's, it's tailored that way. Um, mm. I even have a, I have a six month um, kind of like intensive, which is comes with a call every two weeks. And it, the structure will be based entirely on what that partic particular person wants to focus on at their pace. Yeah. Yeah, great. Um, but it's very collaborative. Um, I like to give like live feedback and input. I'm I'm very hands on. Like I'll jump in. I'll show you how to do something or tweak something if I can see it. Um, but basically, the thing I get told the most is people love being on the call with me. Just the clarity yeah. that they get and the confidence that they get from it. And it's really yeah, just yeah. helping people see see what they have already, and they just don't realize yeah isn't that the, that's the sweet spot of coaching though isn't it just that that when you people when you show people what they are capable of yeah I sorry I Denise better, no I was gonna say I think there's nothing better than when you're a person that is lacking confidence and you first take that first step to speak to somebody somebody professional that can help you with your business you know to know that once you jump on that call you start talking to that person that person thinks exactly like you um yeah. and has got a great sense of humor it it makes an, an an enormous difference on that person. I mean, I've yeah. had many calls where I've spoken to people that are completely way above who I am, and I've really, really struggled to connect and make mm. conversations. And because now I'm obviously trained as an OBM, I'm I'm supposed to be trained to work with people at a certain profit margin level. Margins, and those yeah. people are kind of genuinely way out of what my zone is, and I've really, really struggled with that. Um, and a bit like you, I've I kind of reverse my thinking on it and wanted to start working with people similar to yours Hannah so to be able to talk to someone on that same level makes an enormous difference I think mm -hmm. um, and you know and I do think that that, that people are going to relate to people more that are on the same level as you yeah it's that relatability isn't it, it being is, able to yeah. like really connect with one another I like to think of myself as an accountability buddy you know Let's, <laughs> yeah. like, I'm, I'm there to keep you accountable um, and help yeah. you out but also to push you um, someone described my coaching style as um, kick you in the butt but in the nicest way possible <laughs> <laughs> like I'm gonna make you do this because I believe in you and I want you to succeed <laughs> you know? do it now <laughs> yeah um, so yeah I'm a, I'm a butt kicker in a nice way because I won't I don't like to let people make excuses for not doing something I'll be there like yeah no, come on you can do this. You're amazing. Why are you arguing about this? Yeah. Um, it's one of the things like it took me actually, Denise, I have your cousin to credit for this because when <laughs> I first started out, she gave me this one piece of advice that has stuck with me, which is charge the most for what you find easiest because it's only easy because you've spent years perfecting that yeah, skill. Right. So oh, for me, like lovely. coming up with big marketing strategies and ideas and pulling, pulling stuff out of people it doesn't feel like work to me. It feels effortless, but yeah. it brings a huge value to people. And I have to continually remind myself that I need to be charging the worth of it because it's not what yes. it's worth to me in terms of energy and time. It's what it's worth to the recipient. To someone else. Yes. Their energy and their time. Mm. And I, think I hope all our listeners are listening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. I completely agree with you. And I can, yeah, and I completely agree with what other Hannah said. Um, yeah. <laughs> to, yeah. And I think we forget that, don't we? Because we forget, like, because we, we're good at something, we think, oh, that's, e that's easy. So I should be charging that much for something I can do very easily. And actually, no, that's because you're an expert in it. And that's where you should be charging more. So yes, yeah, it, definitely. <laughs> Yeah, it's just like the hair cutting thing, right? Well, we were just saying like how much you spend on, on cutting hair, right? 
um like i mean i uh, canadian money like you you're looking at a minimum of 60 dollars which i think is about okay. 40 quid or something okay. like that. Mm-hmm. so so I, i'm and i'm like i don't blink to pay that because they've had the training and everything right but yeah 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 i can do it myself and i don't give myself any like you know <laughs> <laughs> i don't give myself any credit for knowing how to do it do you know what i mean i think that's a very mm. common thing is that we we just don't give ourselves credit for the things that we know how to do like the yes. like the getting the kids <laughs> between after school <laughs> activities on time right that's incredible yeah. time management skills absolutely yeah i mean i i like to compare that experience with herding as herding with herding cats because i'm always <laughs> in awe of mums and children and how you are actually her- cat herders <laughs> We do herd cats as well because I have three of them in my house as well. <laughs> like, you know, I do herd cats quite a lot. <laughs> I do remember that. Oh, so- yeah. Uh, I was just going to talk about um, because obviously, like us three in common, we all have a, a common goal to help women in business uh, to start and grow their businesses. So, Hannah, where do you think that you would see? Do you think you can see a trend now? Um, do you think like the world is changing when it comes to how women are working? Uh, and obviously, I know sort of COVID has partly changed that because a lot of people have gone to to working from themselves when they've been say made redundant through that particular period in time. But do you think there's been? Can you see a shift happening with the way women are working now? Uh, yes and no. Um, when I started like an online business, I I suddenly these doors to this amazing vibrant welcoming online community of women owning businesses on like this opened up to me a world I didn't even know existed and I have made so many Mm. amazing connections and friendships um through like all over the world because of this shared connection um but then I look at my my friends here who are still in their corporate jobs I'm trying to get them to like come come to me come, away. come to the dark come side, the other side. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I think I think yes there was a it was a turning point for a lot of people I I definitely <laughs> I would recommend um being in business for yourself to anyone who's a parent <laughs> to mm-hmm. anyone who's neurodivergent because it's all about like and just the confidence you get and like I don't have to like I don't have to convince you. You have to convince me that I want to work with you. Mm-hmm. Right. And, mm-hmm. and like, I don't have to report to anyone or explain what I'm doing with my time or, you know, I'm like, this is what I do. This is how much it costs. I don't even and have you, to give a resume to people. Yeah, I say, this you is make what the I rules. do. Yeah, exactly. And that, that is so empowering, especially as someone who's been socialized as a woman, because that's, we don't, you don't get that in that employment um, environment set. so yes yeah to come back to your question I do think there is a trend of I do think there are more businesses opening more people especially women moving towards this and I want to encourage more to do it mm-hmm. um but I do feel a pushback a pullback from those male CEOs who um or sorry those men <laughs> in charge who want to um pull people back into the office and under under the thumb um Mm -hmm. and I'm not going to go off on a patriarchy rant here but um there's a pushback there too and there's there's still um a lot of us who are there's and there's a lot of reasons that we're trapped there too I've been trying to get my my mom to go into business for herself too because she's a really good writer but health benefits you know where like Mm -hmm. not everyone has the option to just go into work for themselves because they yeah. have health benefits, you know, and, yeah. and all yeah. that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Predictable, reliable income. Like, I can have my own business because my husband, when he's not at school, he's getting a predictable, reliable income. So income. it's, I can have fluctuations. Like I'm very project-based when I work and, and, but conversely, it also means I can take the summer off to be with the kids when they're not in yeah, school. Yeah. I can take yeah. spring break. And so there's, I, I think I kind of went off on a tangent there, but I, I think yes and no is my answer. Yeah. No, I love that. Uh, I, I love that you said that. Point. Yeah, but uh, I work with um uh corporate businesses in terms of like readdressing their their corporate culture and uh small businesses and big businesses. And I think there is a shift in our attitude at work. Maybe not so much in the huge big or you know, big complex organizations still have those old boys' clubs at the top. They're not really interested in any degree of diversity, they're not necessarily conscious of of the power that bringing in a degree of diversity into a business can can create um they're also not inclined to you know we have to consider that 
they were also educated at a time where work meant nine to five. That's what the, you know, that's yeah. their expectation. We, it is, there is a culture shift in progress, but I think a lot of people were also like, even in our generation who were raised for nine to five, that's what you do. Oh. That's the best thing for you. That's if, the safest if thing. If you're on time, you're late. You know, I always left late for lunch, came back early. I never took my coffee breaks. Like, you know, yeah. no problem answering work emails outside of home. You know, I remember in my last job, um, the, you know, my manager calling me whilst I'm giving the kids a bath to ask me to order him some takeout. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, the boundaries on that. <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, but so like, but that's the thing is that that's, um, but I, like I said, I think there's, we're in a cultural shift right now and, yeah, and yeah. Well, the best thing we can do is to continue pushing forward yeah yeah, yeah 100 percent. and and, and, and empowering people, people who can you, yes of course there's this major 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 um issue of stability but if you can start a business if you have the you know get the support you can you can do it if that's what you if you want that i think recognizing that there are people who have done it and are doing it and there is support available makes it more accessible mm. yeah and and mm. I think it's really powerful when a group of women all get together I mean I attend a lot of women's networking groups and um just that room is just buzzing you know people were buzzing <laughs> with ideas and I think women do tend to brainstorm all together don't they whereas yes. I think men do it very differently to women and women are very much you know oh I've got this great idea what do you think and women will talk about it for ages and they'll say oh I might have someone who knows how to do this and do you know what I mean and I always say and it's something I've always said is if women were allowed to have more control of their lives centuries ago because we are talking centuries because men have ruled for a very very long time we'd all be living on Mars by now because the power <laughs> of getting women together with ideas and creating something. In fact, I don't actually think we'd be living on Mars. I think we'd be fine. We'd be living on Alpha Centauri by now, but <laughs> I just I honestly think that. And I think we've, we've been held back for so long and um, you know, and I do think there is going to be a major shift, but you're right. I think we just need to keep pushing and pushing and it yeah, will yeah, yeah. get there. Yeah. yeah. I think we have to recognize know that this world exists too. Cause yeah, like yeah, I said, yeah. I didn't even know that this existed until I happened to have that chance referral. Right. Absolutely. And, um, I had no idea that this was even an option. A so possibility. We people aware. Yeah. Yeah. Possible. And I think that's so vital. It's just simple awareness that you can do things differently. You can't, there is a way to do it. That If you've got that hankering, there's a way to do things in a different, in a different to how you've been mm -hmm. taught is acceptable. And all those other programming conditioning stories that condition stories that we grow up with. So Hannah, how do you see yourself responding to that kind of change, that kind of cultural shift? Oh, um, well, one of the things I always think about is I have two daughters uh, or I have two children who identify as girls um, and they um, and I want them like it's actually kind of fun because for, for a while, like my husband was the one home doing all the child care. So they were like, mom yeah. goes to work. Mom okay. works. And they had to get okay. used to the idea that dad could work too. Yes. And yes. For yes. them, work meant being in home in my little closet that is my office. <laughs> I have a cloth. <laughs> um, but that was that was and then they're like, oh, you can go out to work. And so like I love that this is their normal, their like status yeah, quo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um that they expect that their expectation is that they will be self-employed. That they can well. have that, that option. They yeah. They want. Mm. Yeah. And and I guess that's kind of, that's one of my driving forces. It's kind of the, the kind of thing I gauge it by. I always think, what do I want them to feel like is an option for them? Like, what do I want them to feel is open to them as they grow? Mm, and so I want yeah. them to know that they can do absolutely anything they want to. Mm, I completely I agree with you there. I, you know, my daughter's 10 and obviously she's going off to high school in September. Um, and it's, you know, she's getting to that age where she's starting to think about oh, what happens after you leave school and all that kind of stuff. 
and you know I don't want her to just go with what society thinks that she should be doing um which is i don't know about canada but certainly in U- the uk the education system is still very archaic in the sense that it sort of oh you've got to be academically great to get anywhere you've got to have this grade you've got to have that grade um and then you can go to university and then you can get that job in that smart office or wherever it is in london and actually the real world doesn't work like that at all and mm. there's not unfortunately here in the uk i don't think there's enough put into that system to be able to guide children to give them those options well i went through the uk um, system i actually yeah, went through yeah, yeah. the system. system so i yeah no i know it for a second actually i i originally trained to be a design technology teacher um and talking about segmenting there because like i trained to do everything but you'd notice that all the girls would take textiles right and maybe food and then all like and the, the rarely you'd, see, you'd never see boys taking textiles but you might see girls taking electronics or systems and control so like seeing that segment like just automatically happening with yeah um, yeah from such I was a young age that I went to an all-girls school so I never got to see that I actually happened to do boy subjects like I did physics and maths and design technology right mm. and I never saw I never realized that I was doing boy subjects boy so subjects by my mm. yeah by my gender um but I think yeah I, I there was a huge that you have to go to university and then you'll get a good job. And, and then honestly, um, it's one of the things that stopped me from going into business for myself for so long. I've always been interested about marketing, always been mm. curious about it, but I don't have a, a ma- I don't have a business degree. I don't have a master's yeah. degree. I haven't, I haven't formally learned marketing in the sense of going off to college or anything to do, to do that specifically. I figured mm. this out. I've learned mm. it. I've, I've had various training sessions and coaching courses and stuff, but I haven't had the formal, you know, I can't put letters behind my name to, mm. in relation to my marketing expertise. Um, but I don't think that matters. I'm, I mean, mm, not uh, anymore. I used to roll my eyes at the careers teacher who used to say, you might have a job that doesn't exist right now. And I was like, Oh yeah, I'm like space Whatever. waitress or something. <laughs> and then I'm like, no, actually I do, have, you know, I do have a job that didn't exist when I was in high school. I do have a job that didn't exist back then. Um, And so, um, yeah, I think it's just kind of shaky. Like you don't need to be, also let's just face it, the school system wasn't designed for, they were designed for one particular neurotype and not for anybody else. Um, They're also designed for like an expected pathway. They're not, they're not designed for creativity. They're not designed to think outside the box, to ask Mm -hmm. questions, to be challenged. I I mean, for whatever reasons, they are very straight pathways um, to a destination, to an accepted destination. I'm, I'm one of four siblings, right? My sister and I went to the same school. Um, so we had one and we we academically excelled it was a private school you know lots of emphasis on on academic success my my one brother has um Asperger's and he ended up being like in a special school just for um like for kids with like emotional social behavioral difficulties and so they weren't academically minded but he's so intelligent he's so smart and he never kind of got the opportunity to right. be as academically like to, as academically challenged as he wanted to be my other yeah, brother yeah. he he kind of he went to, he did some of his schooling in the UK some of his schooling in Canada and he didn't he was not academically successful but intellectually he's no different to the rest of us mm. and it like but it's because the school system wasn't built for you know for their differences like he has ADHD yeah. he has dyslexia he yeah. has dyspraxia and he's bipolar so he's got like a whole like collection of complications yeah yeah. of reasons why the school system doesn't work for him and so um like and like just even my mom who she I remember her going back to school in her which was my age she went back to school she got a degree in archaeology and English and then a master's in English and I loved seeing that because she I um she got held back a year in high school and this Mm. is an incredibly intelligent woman incredibly talented writer as well I have to say but Mm. she's just like she's such a smart and she never saw that as herself because of her bad educational experience she's she's not diagnosed with anything but I bet you she's she's if she's not dyslexic if she's she's not ADHD she's at least dyslexic and I just think that's what I mean like there's so many we we have to distance ourselves from those like 
stereotypes of stories we've been told all these years i'm sorry i'm going off mm. on a soapbox again no, no, no i no, love no, it no. i think it's beautiful and i know but that you, denise is like is this kind of go we we have these types of conversations together yeah, so we're definitely totally on the same page with you, with you. I was going to say, um, I was going to ask you um, who is not neurodiverse in your in your parents, because all four of you are neurodiverse. Um, uh, I, I thought that was quite an interesting observation. But I also think it's quite an interesting observation to notice that your um, brother was in a school that was equipped for uh, um, for him in our generation where the, that like that in itself is quite an advantage, given that most kids with any kind of neurodiversity at that time probably went under the radar or were just assumed to be naughty kids or you know pushed to the remedial classes or the bottom mm -hmm. yeah. streams depending on where you know what type of That's something you I went should to. also mention I was diagnosed with dyslexia when I was 13 my sister was diagnosed mm -hmm. a little bit earlier than me she's younger than me but hers was her dyslexia is a little bit more like mine's mild and hers is less mild <laughs> okay okay um, is it my brother Matthew was diagnosed like he was he was I know I remember him being in special needs for the longest time um yeah but it took a while to get a formal diagnosis for him um and then like by the time my younger brother came along we all knew what to look for so like it was easier to get him tested and I've gone yeah. and got my my eldest daughter has already been diagnosed with ADHD and we're just waiting for my my youngest to go in and get it because we know the signs now yeah yeah, um, yeah. but I was I've actually never been formally diagnosed with ADHD um I I have I I had a therapist who specializes in neurodivergent and working with neurodivergent patients and mm -hmm. so we worked we we figured it out together yeah, um, yeah but a lot of especially women again because of the way we're socialized don't get diagnosed or didn't in our generation did not get diagnosed with ADHD yeah. you've probably seen a trend of all these people suddenly going I have ADHD and yeah yeah like well, sudden, like, like no Denise and I have had conversations both Denise and I are confident yeah. that the, uh we've got it I'm confident my yeah. my sister I'm fairly confident my sister and I have both got it I don't know I don't like saying got it because actually from I think it's a I think we have to take a different approach to it I think we have to recognize that our um we can't if you bring us back to a biological level and you think about us as a herd of animals, and I know people don't like that, that drawing that comparison, but if you think about us as a herd of animals, it makes much more sense to have brains that don't all work the same to keep exactly. a, a, a yeah. group thriving. It's I, alive, I don't it? think it's a bad thing. Neurotypical, right? Neurotypical. I, I, I like to think like there is no neurotypical. Like if, if we need to, there's there we need to change our definition of neurotypical because if we try because there's so many neurotypical is being neurodiverse you know what I mean yeah. precisely like, precisely, precisely gender right we have to get out of these outdated ideas that there's just one or the other because there's so yeah. many different yeah. ways to d like to be like different genders to be you know um yeah. we have to just like kind of update our our way of thinking, thinking about it yeah because I think everybody is mm. I think everyone's neurodiverse in the sense that we all have oh, a yeah. different way of thinking. We all have a different way of approaching and we all need accommodations to help. Like we, we should, in a perfect world, we would all um, be given the space to, to um, lean on our particular strengths and mm. be supported. So this is the drum system. that I bang that says equity. Everybody gets a shoe that fits, not just a shoe. And I think that encapsulates the idea. I know that that was not my quote. Some much more intelligent person than I came up with that quote <laughs> or that comparison. But I think that's how we have to start thinking about the world. We can't just keep going around expecting everybody to fit in the box when they're never going to fit in the box. We're not designed to fit in the box. But yeah. I, there was a recent, um, I don't know if you've ever heard of it, but um, I only heard it from listening to a conversation on the radio. And it really like, I really had a light bulb moment when when they were talking about it. But there is a condition, I don't know if you could class it as a condition, called aphantasia. And I'm not sure if any of you guys have heard of it. And I might have spoken to you about it, um, Ashley. Yeah, I know what and it is. Yeah. It, was, it, I, I, it was quite profound when I was listening to this conversation that we talk about how people's minds are all very different. One obvious sign that people's brains are different is that some people see when you think of an image in your head if you think of an object I don't know like an elephant I always use an elephant as an example do you see a picture of an elephant in your head or do you just see the word and depending on whether you see the word or the picture makes a profound acknowledgement that every 
body's brain works completely differently (laughs) because in my world i see pictures all the time i see visual things all the time but then when i mentioned it to a friend they said well i only see the words and they're just that just like it blows just your like, mind what? you know <laughs> and because we all think that we think the same but we don't yeah, yeah. and that's just a prime example of it yeah yeah i mean i've yeah. been about that conversation forever because it made me think that when my mum was alive that that she potentially could have had aphantasia and we just weren't, wasn't aware of it weren't aware my of it my mum couldn't read a book to save her life no it's not because she couldn't read she could read perfectly but she she would like start reading something after one page and she said i'm bored and put it down because i don't think she could imagine the story in her head the when you read the book head. and mm. it's, so it's boring it this whole like amazing like concepts that everybody's thinking something differently and <laughs> it's just yeah yeah that is crucial because we te- we always assume that everybody else's experience is identical to ours because we see it from our perspective we don't necessarily we can't it, it takes us a while to adjust to the pos- possibility that someone else sees something different to us like yeah has experienced emotional experiences psychological experiences physiological experiences differently to us even touch so yeah I feel like the three of us could go on about this forever Mm -hmm. and I'm just a little (laughs) conscious of our time and I also really want Hannah I really would love you to tell our listeners what you can do for them absolutely um well (laughs) if you are interested in exploring the world of being an online entrepreneur if you're interested in figuring out maybe you have started but you're just not sure how to market yourself online um i'm here i have the showing mm-hmm. up podcast which is a video podcast over on youtube or on spotify apple um and you can and you can also find it showing up solo.com but it's it's just free education all about marketing like everything marketing you can pretty much we, we've um done over 50 episodes so far and Amazing. there's still more to come. Um, this is like the third year that the showing up so the podcast has been out, and we just do an episode every two weeks. We don't have seasons; okay. we just go, we just um, keep going. I know. And so we've we've covered most most topics now. So um, and it's all right. about making it really easy and accessible. And um, because I want you to know that you can do this, you mm. can figure this out. Oh, it's not rocket surgery, you know. No, <laughs> really. um, absolutely. And then. Um, and then if you want some more support or a little bit more um, education, I have self-paced courses and I also have my coaching packages um, where I can help you with just getting it into action, like actually implementing what you've learned, clearing up any questions and helping you with that all important confidence boost that you might need. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you're just looking for something free to get you started, I have a whole plethora of free resources on my website um from how to get your first three clients to or three things you can do to get your first client and uh to like um how to repurpose your content to how to build a home page like and those are all just free um for anyone to access on my website okay amazing hannah's details are going to be in the show notes and we'll make sure there's loads of links that you can click straight through to all her resources um Hannah thank you so much it's been such a lovely conversation yeah it's really really great to catch up with you then Hannah as well (laughs) I know we spoke (laughs) recently but it's lovely to see you again as well (laughs) it's lovely it's lovely I've had a really I've really enjoyed it you can have me back anytime (laughs) oh we will I we definitely will I feel like we've touched on a bunch of topics we all need to have like a follow-up conversation about all those other little bits that we wanted to talk more about <laughs> so yeah we'll have to make room won't we about the conversation. we have to do some more we'll like, all those conversations that we've been meaning to have with other people we just not had a chance to <laughs> yeah. yeah exactly oh it's been amazing okay um if you want to reach out to hannah your details will, uh, her details will be in the show notes and yes. thank you so much for listening to us thank you hannah thank you for having me thanks everyone for listening you're so welcome Give me one.